My mother was born in 1937 in Detroit, Michigan. She had a training in, in, in classical music and in theory and harmony. She played percussion also uh, uh, in, in the latter days of uh, her high school uh, uh, orchestra. Her brother uh, was a great bassist named Ernest Farrell, who used to uh, perform with Yusuf Boutique. Encouraged my mother to uh, check out jazz music. My mother was also the organist uh, in her church uh, from the time she was a young teenager and was getting a, a bit of local uh, uh, notoriety in Detroit as a, an excellent bebop piano player. Uh, she did move to Paris in the uh, latter 50s, maybe around 58, 59, uh, and uh, was there to study with her hero and mentor, uh, Bud Powell. Uh, there are several videos uh, of her performing uh, at a club during the late 50s with Kenny Clark on drums and Lucky Thompson on saxophone. Again, my mother's playing in the style of Bud Powell, very young, 23-year-old Alice Coltrane. Uh, she did move to New York shortly after that and began uh, starting a jazz career. Uh, and uh, there are many recordings of her playing with the vibraphonist Terry Gibbs, who's uh, still with us and is a huge admirer of Alice's uh, work, her playing. And, um, and it was while working with Terry Gibbs' band, Alice met my father, John Coltrane, at the, the Birdland here in New York City. Their union uh, uh, developed very quickly. They came together very, very quickly had three kids, and uh, when my father's classic quartet um, began to dissolve uh, at the, near the end of 1965, my father asked my mother to, to join the group. So, and she played in that group for a few years before my father passed away in 67. And uh, after some time, uh, she started her own solo career, making several records for the Impulse label. Uh, records that are getting a lot of uh, notoriety today. You know, she's uh, unsung in, in, in many ways uh, for her jazz work. Yet, more and more and more and more people are, are discovering her music. And it's during the 70s, she began to really uh, sort of push the boundaries of, of what was considered, uh, you know, uh, a typical jazz album, moving into a, a, a much freer, uh, more avant garde approach to. to uh, you know, her, uh, the, the arrangements and the orchestrations. She was in, very much in love with uh, symphonic music and uh, strings became just a, a, a kind of a go-to part of her sound. I don't think there's, there are very few records that she, she did after a certain point that didn't have some types of string arrangements on them that she wrote herself, of course. She uh, started playing the Wurlitzer organ and performing on that. She started playing harp and, of course, was uh, recording on that in the latter 60s. And uh, at some point began to really uh, focus on uh, her spiritual practice and direction and incorporating that into her, her recordings. So it was, uh, it was an interesting evolution, you know, moving from, from <laughs> the music that she played uh, as a young girl in church to playing uh, bebop, the style of Bud Powell in the late 50s, uh, to being the accompanist to, to John Coltrane for several years in his uh, last band, and a collaborator in, in many ways with him. Her uh, early albums as a leader, you know, that were more in a jazz vein, you know, and those, and those records uh, began to shift throughout the 70s, getting much more elaborate and, and, and creative and expressive and, and wild. Uh, uh, and then the, the shift, the transition to the spiritual music. So Teresa Sings comes right, basically again at the end of that that lineage, you know, and that was essentially the music that she continued to make for the rest of her life.